Hello, everyone. Today is Thursday, August 27th, 2021. This is the Producers Happy Hour. But today is a bit of a different show. Uh, I'm Lawrence Lewis, and I'm here with my uh, producer, bestie, sister Christian. And sadly, we've lost a member of the New York filmmaking community, Greg Peterson. And uh, today's show is uh, simply in honor of him. And Christian, you were uh, a close friend of his in in more ways than just professionally. So I'm just going to throw it over to you and see how you're doing and uh, <laughs> and let you talk about Craig Peterson. Even, even just hearing that. Uh, so I um, I'm devastated. I am angry. <laughs> um, definitely. I dude, I thought I would definitely go before him. He's mm. healthy. He didn't drink, you know, like whatever. I, 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 I I mean, I was honored to know him. I would not consider him a friend. I would consider him part of my family, a family that I could choose. So today we lost Greg Peterson and a lot of you knew him as GP and sometimes Phantom, if you knew him long enough. (laughs) And I've known Greg for 15 plus years, I think. I can't even remember when we met because it's at the moment we met, it felt like we'd known each other forever. <sighs> Today, um, I got a text that um, said, I can't believe GP is dead. Or, are you okay? And I was like, oh, <laughs> what? <laughs> News. First of all, <laughs> note to self. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Secondly, um, note to self, don't send that via text. Sorry if you're listening, but I think it's a life lesson that we should all learn. Yeah, that's a phone call. Um, Secondarily, Prince Elder sent me a text saying, hi, are you available for a phone call? And I was like, of course, because the blow had already been, you know, if I would have gotten that text without knowing that information, I was, it was in a meeting, so I just, I wouldn't have probably, I would have probably put it aside. So I'm happy. There's a lot of things that happened today, but that said, I called Prince and he told me what had happened and um, it was very sudden and it was unexpected. I couldn't even process the words that he was saying fast enough because I kept thinking like Greg's head, like all my experiences and life and discussions and on set experiences and all the time, every time we were together at any of my parties or any of his and any time we had interactions went, was just coursing through my head. And I just kept thinking that I'm never going to have that again. Yeah. And so the very, (laughs) I knew we had to record, but I reached out to you and was like, okay, so this has happened. And I need a few minutes to think, but I already know that um, because of the amount of calls and texts that I've gotten asking me if I'm okay, mm-hmm. I feel like it's important that people hear what I have to say about Greg. I know that what I, what Greg was to me, I only dreamed that I was to him. Mm-hmm. And I know I was because he told me, but Everybody who called me today or texted me or is going to keep doing it because it's been an onslaught was doing it because they know yeah. what he meant to me. And they were, t- I was getting condolences about because every- we were inseparable. Like Greg is, I mean, even though I, ha- I mean, like pandemic really fucked me, you know, like we haven't <sighs> seen anybody. Yeah. <laughs> and to have not seen him in a year and a half didn't mean that his name wasn't in my mouth once a week. Even when I was like, you remember Greg Peterson? And you're like, maybe that name. And I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah, because I fucking talk about him about all the time. Him, yeah. He's like, he's a, he's a goddamn national treasure <laughs> is what he was. <laughs> so then I ordered a bottle of Dom Perignon. Good for you. And I know, and I'm going to, so in honor of producer's happy hour and getting to talk about Greg for the amount of time that we have, yes. I'm going to open a bottle of champagne and for Greg. That is very because nice. I wish I could be there and joining you with that in, per- in person. 
I know, but also, I can tell also you, I'm to be console, able to it console you. Good. <laughs> well, I, I'm, I made myself a drink to join you. I made myself. What did you, what'd you make? A, a mezcal Negroni. So, oh, uh, Jesus. Yeah. Go, boy. A, a little stiff one uh, in honor of Greg Peterson, who I, I, like I said, I do remember his name. I know I've met him at your, at, at uh, your pumpkin, your famous pumpkin carving uh, parties. <laughs> and, so- uh, for those of you who don't know, I used to get, I give an annual pumpkin carving contest every year, right? So it's just a bunch of people who, and most of them were production based, but some crew, some art department. Oh my God, when the art department people would show up, mm. oh, mwah, because then you get some weird ass pumpkins, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh, I know. And just don't let me, t- oh, remember the year that Tara Dolak and Becky Morrison got into it because Tara's pumpkin won of New Jersey or no, mm. Becky's pumpkin won of a ghost in Tara's state, New Jersey, whatever. <laughs> Greg was there then. <laughs> so Greg would show up to these parties and he would be literally head to toe Prada, literally <laughs> like a hat <laughs> yeah. fucking, and it would all match same pattern. And it, he would show up to the party and he would always have five or six um, other men with him, which was mostly like Keith would be there or Dwayne, Prince, um, Xavier. Like there would just be like these guys who would show up too. And most of a couple of them would have ladies. The ladies were always dressed lit- five inch heel. Like I would live on third floor walk ups, yeah. you know, five yeah. inch heels and like, you know, the <clears throat> most gorgeous outfits, like they were going to a club. Mm-hmm. And I would just be like, oh, okay, so we have jello shots and we're elbow deep in like pumpkin, pumpkin guts. guts but yeah. Here we go. And Greg would be like, <laughs> ah. And it would just be, it would just be a great time because Greg would, because ah, the blending of cultures and stuff, but more than that, and I know that this sounds like very like small level, minute, local almost, mm-hmm. but Greg would always say something like, I'm bringing the brothers. And he would come and it would just be this, this blend of cultures in a way that was, it taught so much to everybody Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. who came Mm -hmm. in such a way that you could never, you would never be able to voice. You would only be able to experience. Right. And Greg allowed me to be part of that world of -hmm. his. And that to me was the most special thing and beyond anything that we ever could have been he um, trusted that I was a good person. Right. I, there's no value mm-hmm. to have earned Greg's trust yeah. and respect. Yeah. Was beyond anything that I ever knew that I needed or understood how it would change me. Right. I want to hear more about him, but first, can you tell me what position, what role in production he served? So when I met Greg, he was a truck PA, Okay. especially in New York. I'm not quite sure because I never really did a deep dive on production managing in LA, Right. but in New York as a coordinator and as a production manager, you were only as good as your truck PA. Oh yeah. Yeah. And that's because you could give them a list or not a list. Mm Mm-hmm. You could just be like, oh, I need walkies and a camera and all this. These are the vendors. And they would figure it out. Because um, when I first started as a coordinator, you would put on the pickups list, you'd put it in order. Yeah. <laughs> of when shit was ready. Uh-huh. And you would be like, and then here's the beverage order. Like we had a beverage order. And somebody like Greg would look at that and be like, okay. And then would never, wouldn't do it. Oh. He knew the better. Like he was the one out there driving. He was yeah. the one like, yeah. So, <laughs> so when you had somebody of his caliber who was loyal, or who was like, you know, like you were loyal to, and he was loyal to you, you were a team in that sense. And you hired him on every job. All of a sudden, when you didn't have to worry about anything getting done, mm-hmm. you could begin to concentrate on the bigger picture. Um, yeah. The bigger parts of your job. And so you would be, you became stronger. Yep. You became more confident in yourself. Yeah. You understood city logistics. Like it just, it does so much to you, right? Yeah. And so that was what he was in the beginning. Mm-hmm. And for a few years, yeah. right? Then he started coming to the parties because when I, when we work together, we're friends, whoever you are. Yeah. When we work together, especially if we get along, um, we're just going to start doing things together. Mm-hmm. And it may last for just the job 
or it may last forever. I don't fucking know. Yeah. But we like each other. So why don't we just, you know, like <laughs> hang, hang for out. a little bit. Yeah. Exactly. And then I used to give these like insane, like 300, 400 pre- person parties at bars and shit. So mm-hmm. like, yeah. And then there would be my house parties, like all of it. Greg was always there. Then we started talking about a little more about life stuff. Greg, you could, you could put anybody with them. So there was an onslaught of people like John Scott Wilson, <laughs> Steve Bruno. Mm-hmm. These are first ADs in New York who mm-hmm. started off as um, truck PAs with Greg. I see. Then Greg started getting other men from his neighborhood and would train them. So we would have this deal. I'd be like, Greg, it's a one day shoot with, you know, one pickup of one. So it's only three days. And you'd be like, I'm on a five-day job, but I'll send somebody to you. I was like, great. Because right. I always knew that you were getting somebody who was Greg Caliber because right. he would not be embarrassed right. by who he recommended. So he did a lot. So all of a sudden, there was like 15 or 20 PAs that you could have. And so then um, any of the food that was left over from your shoots, any mm-hmm. of the clothing, any of the water, any of the beverages, anything. Because in New York, we don't have we don't have a place to take shit. No. You know what I mean? Yeah. So Greg would take it home and give it out in the neighborhood. Oh, amazing. Oh, God. Right? Yeah. And, and then eventually he bought a ton of um, production supplies and walkies. And wow. then started his own company with Ron Pritchard. And, of course, you know, and then they had furniture. Because, again... For those of you who don't know, in New York, no stages has nice furniture. So you right. got to order your Always video village your furniture. Yeah. He bought some of that shit. It was like really good. And what was the name so, of his, his company? The Setup. The Setup. That's good. Mm-hmm. So, but they never did um, Expendables because that shit's that's rough. Right. Yeah. You know, like who wants yeah. to be kind of counting um, gel feet? feet. Yeah. Feet. Uh-huh. <laughs> no. Come here, gel. Let me see your feet. <laughs> And then I would say about 10 years ago, he started opening up about racism and the effect on it. And I started hearing him voice himself more, mm-hmm. especially, and then I know Trayvon Martin was a much later than 2010, mm-hmm. but when Tra- but that's when the huge talk started. And right. also, you know, 2010, I think it started because that's when I was starting to be really unhappy with my home life. Mm. And we used to just talk for hours on jaw and I was unhappy. P- I was unhappy. Mm-hmm. And by 2011 or 12, yeah, like it was marathon. And, and we would just talk a ton and he would start to tell me about things. Like I, I, he taught me so much about himself and about racism by just allowing me to see the experiences that he had. And I remember once he, ta- he told me about a time he left one of my jobs and got arrested for holding um, a knife. Mm. <laughs> And, but it wasn't a knife. It was a, you know, box cutter right. that you would just, any truck PA would have one. Yeah. And he went to Grand Central Station and at least it was stop and frisk and they found it and they were like, he's like, I use it for work. And they said, call your boss right now and we'll let you go. Oh my God. And I was like, Greg, why didn't you call me? And he was like, because I shouldn't have to. You sh- yeah, exactly. Yeah. And Greg changed me in that moment because Mm -hmm. he allowed me to understand instead of just ignoring it or saying, oh no, or calling like any of that. What he did was allow me to understand more deeper. Yeah. It was never his job to teach me, but I do know that he allowed me to see a lot more than Mm -hmm. he did other people. And with that, it changed my entire outlook on everything that I was doing and everything that I could be. Yeah. Because any time we've ever talked or anything that I've ever done or any social justice work that I've done, any marches that I've, all of that was because my first and entire thought of any time that I would see anything happening was it was happening to Greg. Mm -hmm. Right. Greg literally made me understand. Yeah. And I'm not sure how that sounds. I don't really care. I just know that the way I grew up and the way that I thought of things and the way that I did not think that I was racist was all before Greg. And the way Mm -hmm. that I understood without him telling me how I was, was because of him too. Yeah. He was a really, truly good friend. If I, I was thinking about this earlier, like how could I tell you how much he meant to me and I was like well here's a good way 
if I had to pick 10 people that I could only see for the rest of my life, Greg would be in that 10. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, I mean, there's just so many lists like that, that I can go on, but I can't imagine life without him. Right. The influence, his, um, the stories that he used to tell me that would break my heart, but it would also teach me like all the things that he let me know was something that I knew that he, he only did because he trusted me and he felt like I would do something right. with the information. Which you did. You allowed it to change you. Well, I, I'm a better person because I knew him. Mm -hmm. And he allowed me to be that. Yeah. If I would have done nothing with his trust, then I, I didn't deserve him. But he, <laughs> he let me deserve him. Oh. I know. And I miss him. So, I mean, I just... I, he's, he's been gone six hours and I can't even, I don't know. I know. Like, it's just, it's too much. It's too much. So, so I definitely wanted to come in here because I, and say all these things because the calls and the texts and the posts have been amazing. And I feel like it's all because everybody knows how much he meant to me and how much I meant to him. Mm -hmm. So they're really condolences on me. I'm like, I'm, He's a family is like, yeah, yeah. yeah, like I'm like, who am I? And the, but I get who I am because he, he thought I was worth it. I That's, don't know. I, I don't know how else to put it, but it was my honor to know him. Like <laughs> he just was a, he was a solid. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Nothing ever went wrong. He was never Amazing. late. He, I mean, his PC always looked real. And that's my uh, tip for the kids out there. I don't give a shit what your receipts are. <laughs> make make look them look real. real. Be in the right date range. I mean, just Some, make an effort. Yeah, make an effort. <laughs> I know. And he would like turn it in. I'm like, great. Looks real. <laughs> well, it, sound, it sounds like as, as, as great of a worker as he was, it sounds like your relationship went much, much deeper than that. And that's always a special thing to have with people in our business. Because, uh, you know, a lot of our jobs are so disposable and people come and go and you know you have these fleeting moments with people so to be able to develop a relationship like that with somebody who is that open and trusting of you and willing to share their life with you that's a that's a pretty special friendship that you that you had with him i loved him so like I swear to God, weekly, somebody, I mean, people who don't know him, know him, who know me. Yeah. It's insane. Like, I know, like, and I started calling a few people who I knew don't, aren't on social media. And that started, I mean, Rachel, you know, Rachel Salerno, mm. she's been to multiple parties. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she's party. Yeah. Like me. When she called, I, it was literally 30 minutes after the post went up or so. It was literally like right in the, and the first thing I asked was, are you okay? And she was like, I'm calling you. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, like, I know. <laughs> like it just, this is going to leave a hole in the New York community. It just is. Like I know, I see the posts sometimes on Copros and stuff about the loss and I know how it affects people and you see the responses and stuff. And I'm not, I'm not comparing anything, but I just, mm -mm. this is, this is a big impact. He knew everybody at every vendor that he would go pick up from. Mm -hmm. He had side deals with these people. He, I mean, he, when you would rent a truck from Courier or Edge, they would have a special one set aside if they knew he was coming in. Wow. Like he just, he was the king, man. Yeah. He was this beautiful man who had been through way too much in his life and to have died the way he did was I, I just, I don't know, Lawrence. Yeah. It's just a, it's a big hole right now. It's a big hole on the tail, as you said, of, you know, a pretty shitty year of not being able to see <laughs> the people you love. Like he survived COVID. We, we yeah. survived COVID and then like, boom. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that just, you know, it, points to things we've been talking about in the past few episodes of like personal care and personal wellness, making sure that you're taking care of yourself and the people you know and love and work with. And it's been a really hard time for a lot of people. And I don't know his personal story, so I'm not commenting on anything like that. But, uh, you know, we're all going through our own personal stuff and not all of us have health care in this business. And... No. Most of us don't. Most of us don't. 
And so that's, you know, an ongoing problem. Maybe that's a whole separate episode is healthcare, but, you know. I think it is because yeah. I think that this is the type of thing that um, you start to think about your own mortality because exactly. we have been doing it for fucking ever. Yeah. <laughs> We're the people that, I mean, when we used to hear the stories start, we'd be like, oh, Jesus, and we'd leave the room because our old producers <laughs> who've been doing it for so long, uh-huh. they were BAs, they were 25 bucks a day and you're like whatever <laughs> whatever sure. old man sure old man <laughs> yeah and you can't read the call sheet now i'm like oh i wish i never would have made fun of my producer for not being able to read the call sheet because guy i'm like well, hold on let me get my i am right there stronger readers uh-huh. because these readers don't work <laughs> oh my right? god and so to have known people for as long as we have and for greg to have been you know in that era of people, yeah, you know, you start to think about your own mortality and like, what is it for? Absolutely. You know what I mean? And for, and like, we got a little taste of that during, you know, COVID of, uh, the, you know, what it could be like mm-hmm. less work. And, and today even like I was having the conversation with the three women that I'm working with. I don't even feel like I'm up to like peak, you know, perform like back to my workload, peak performance mm-hmm. or workload or any of that nope. shit. And then I was like, well, wait a second. What, what's to say that that was the, where I was supposed to be. Exactly. Maybe this is the yeah. output that I'm supposed to have. And I was ignoring myself because of the output I was doing a year and a half ago. hundred percent. I think that's what a lot of yeah, people Yeah, And like, why, why am I feeling guilty about not being able to do triple the work that I'm doing right now? Maybe this is the level of work that I'm supposed to, and I yeah. should be thinking about my mental health and my own health yep. and all of the things yep. that, and you're right. Like, I'm not talking about, you know, Greg and what his practices or health practices were. But when somebody you know who's this close to you dies, it makes you think about it. Yes. So it's, Especially it's somebody own in, are in the same business as us. That, yeah. You know. Yeah. And something like this just makes you think because it was so quick um, what happened. And it, like, you know, am I going to am I going to go when I'm like overworked and trying to rush to the office to get a call sheet oh, out? God. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I know it's horrible, but it's true. It's true. Yeah. Like, I'm like, I know. Am I going to go on set <laughs> or a tech scout or in the middle of Ooh. a pre pro meeting? <laughs> oh, this is a really good champagne. <laughs> so it's a good year. Good. So, like, Greg, I was just like, <laughs> oh, he called me once. He was like, I have Louis Vuitton backpacks. I'm like, no. He's like, all right, moving on. <laughs> Just like, I love you, Greg. I don't know where they came from and I don't know where they went, but I could have done it. (laughs) You know, but I just, I, the IATSE stories that we had mentioned the last, on the last episode, I believe they're starting to, you know, like there's more and more being posted. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've seen this Mm. or not, but like, as people get it, like I read them every day and the stories are just so, I mean, as a producer, I'm cringing because the stories that they're saying are so easy to prevent. Oh my God. I know, just by being a human fucking being, yeah. you could, you'd, some of these stories would go away. Yeah. And I just am like, I what we do and what we put up with, but and the flip side, what we're asked to do is just too, it's a lot. It's a, it's lot. a lot. It is. It is. And, you know, you hear people talk about, like, imagine we had to add a shoot day onto every job. And, we're, yeah. and of course, our jobs, our jobs, our commercial jobs, our, you know, three, four, five day shoots or whatever, not feature films. If we just added a shoot day onto every job, that would solve a lot of not everything. Just one. Just, just one shoot day. And mm-hmm. then if you think about that and you hear that where we limit it to 10 hours a day, I can just hear the people involved. Like, There's no way. The budgets aren't there for that. They don't have the money for that. All the, you know, all the excuses. But that, they do. But they do. Like if you think about these companies and the billions of dollars that they have to be able to pay people correctly or to be able to give us more time to do what we need to do, it's a drop in the bucket. So I have an experience recently that um, I saw that the day was ambitious Mm -hmm. and it was tight and they were relying on a non-actor to act. Mm who was also happened to be a female artist who was a, you know, a music artist. Yep. And I thought to myself, this feels like we're being set up because logic would say, and yeah. so I think that mo- two people are at fault here, the client, because 
they don't know enough to not ask. <laughs> right. So yeah, yeah. whatever. Mm -hmm. But the production company for not educating them in a way that was eventful. So what you had was a bunch of sure, no problems, and then got into a situation where you're adding four to 10 hours of overtime or whatever mm -hmm. the fuck it was. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like looking at it going, if you have a non-actor, you cannot ask them to act <laughs> and have it schedule uh, yeah. where you're thinking you're doing 30 shots in 20 minutes. Oh, I'm sorry, God. but I just, and when you ask an AD to make a schedule that fits into your day versus a schedule, a realistic schedule, there's something wrong with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I've been, I digress. Yeah. Well, yeah. But it, it, it's all, it all points to the, the same thing we've been talking about for the past few weeks on the show and past year and a half. Past year and a half. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. And I've been hearing it from other friends as well mm -hmm. that they, you know, like day four of a four day shoot was a 19 hour day. So, and it clearly should have been a five hour, five day shoot. And they, Ooh, they, I've done that job before. They've seen, they, they saw it coming <laughs> down the road. No one wanted to get out of the way of the train, so the train hit them, and of course, you know, they uh, they paid for it. But paying for it's one thing, you know. As we're learning uh, through the years, the the toll on personal health and well being is, is uh, there's no price tag on that. So sure, they can pay the overtime, and it hurts for a minute. But um, our crews on set but are the ones that. But it always turns out that it gets paid. Amazingly. Like, I don't know what happens on the client side where somebody's like, all right, you're fired because of this. But I don't think that shit happens, especially if it's successful. Like, yeah. I don't know, though. Yeah. So going, going back to Greg Peterson, it sounds like he was a big staple in the New York scene. It sounds like he had a big network and a big community. Do we want to do we want to ask people uh, oh, yeah. for their stories like, about him if, or I mean, anything that they want to share about him and their experience with him? Yes, I would love um, for everyone. This would help me. And I think it would help other people if you could send your voice message or in the email about, you know, what Greg meant to you or a story, because we all have. I mean, I have so many yeah. <laughs> that it just they started flashing through my head earlier. And even one where when GP said something particularly crazy or funny, the look on people's faces like Brad, like I the their actual faces popped into my head. Mm. I can remember who was standing with me when we were ha when we would do something like Greg was such a magnetic light that was honest. And also his radar about people was huge. So again, that just goes to my honor to mm -hmm. have for, mm -hmm. to have had him feel the way he did about me. But his radar was big. So when he would say, I don't, when he would say he didn't like somebody or didn't trust somebody or something, Ooh, yeah, like I would just be like, great, Had thank you. Listen because to that. he would see it. So, I know he would see it. And we would have talks about that shit too. Like he just hearing his perspective or if I didn't like somebody and he would explain why, like I valued his opinion, his friendship and his respect beyond. Yeah. Like I, I think that, um, <laughs> he taught me so much, yeah. but I did, I just, <laughs> like it just, it was endless, endless, the kind of shit that we used to do and get through and like where he was there for and when, and he helped me leave my second husband. Like he just did everything. Yeah. And he was there for me every time I needed it. And I was there for him every time he asked. That's amazing. Which was when he asked, I knew it was a big deal. So yeah, I'm, this is for Greg Peterson. Um, yes. yeah, my heart hurts and there's already a big hole in my, in my brain yeah. that, <laughs> yeah. that is missing him. So yeah, I would love to hear from people. How can they reach us? Guys? How can they reach us? <laughs> they can email us their voice recordings at producers, happy hour at gmail.com. You can also post in our Facebook group. Uh, at producers happy hour group dot com. You're also on Instagram, you know, wherever you want to find us. DM but me. DM us, <laughs> slide into our DMs, tell us your stories. If you knew Greg or send us an email or a voice recording, uh, we'd love to hear them. We'll play them over the shows for the next uh, however long they come in. And I uh, wish you well healing, Christian. I know that this leaves a hole in your heart, as it does to many, I'm sure, of his friends and family and his network. So cheers to Greg Peterson. Hang in there, Christian. Cheers, buddy. Yeah. yeah.
I know. I think the next few days I'm flying home from LA. I'm in LA, everyone <laughs> flying home. And, um, I know that the next few days are going to be filled with seeing people that I love yeah. and uh, for a very just devastating reason. So, yeah. all right. Well, thank you, Lawrence, for letting me. Yes, absolutely. Talk about Greg. He was the world. Yes. He will be missed. <laughs> All right. All right. Bye, y'all. Bye, y'all.